In the mid-20th century, many African nations gained independence from their colonial powers, but experienced internal power struggles. Some of these nations turned to coups as a means of regaining control over their newly independent states. Notable examples include Ghana's 1966 coup, which removed Kwame Nkrumah from power, and Nigeria's 1966 coup, which led to a series of power transitions. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union competed for influence in Africa, often supporting opposing factions in coups. This ideological conflict fueled political unrest and military operations in several nations, including Angola, Mozambique, and Ethiopia. Today, we are seeing a resurgence of coups in Africa after years of political instability. In this video, we will explore the positive and negative aspects of coups in Africa. But first, please take a moment to like and subscribe so that our content can reach a broader audience. Coups aimed at removing corrupt or dictatorial regimes are a complex and controversial phenomenon in political history, particularly in African nations. While coups are often seen as a means of addressing serious governance flaws and bringing about positive change, their results are far from certain. Coups can be used to remove entrenched and corrupt leaders who have exploited resources, suppressed dissent, and fostered an environment of impunity. In such cases, coups may be viewed as a necessary step toward breaking free from corruption and initiating a process of political transformation. In some instances, coups have paved the way for transitions to democratic governance. After overthrowing autocratic dictators, military juntas have sometimes committed to organizing free and fair elections and transferring power to civilian governments, as we have seen in Mali and Burkina Faso. The occurrence of coups in a country can be linked to economic problems or perceived mismanagement of resources. In such situations, coup leaders may make changes to stabilize the country's finances, attract foreign investments, and stimulate economic growth. These changes can lead to better living conditions and more employment opportunities for the citizens. Coups can also result in political reforms that improve democracy. This may involve creating a new constitution, building democratic institutions, and implementing electoral processes. Coup leaders may also promise to return the country to civilian rule through free and fair elections to legitimize their authority, leading to increased political liberties and participation. Additionally, the leaders may prioritize social services and welfare programs to meet the needs of the population, such as health care, education, and poverty reduction measures. However, Coups often indicate political instability in a country and can weaken existing power structures, creating opportunities for underprivileged populations. New leaders may have various agendas and philosophies, with some being more inclusive and addressing injustices experienced by marginalized groups. This can lead to legislative reforms that increase political representation for women, ethnic minorities, and other marginalized groups. The international community may oppose coups and pressure the new leadership to move towards democracy and inclusivity, resulting in a commitment to human rights, gender equality, and minority rights. This can lead to increased involvement for these groups and rally civil society and activist groups to advocate for their rights. The instability caused by a coup can serve as a spur for these groups to demand increased representation and rights, and they may win public support. Coups may also lead to the drafting or rewriting of national constitutions, providing opportunities for marginalized groups to gain measures that protect their rights and increase their political involvement. Despite the clearly numerous good aspects of a coup, like all things, it has a bad side as well. 
a coup is characterized by a sudden and frequently violent change of leadership. This political upheaval creates an unstable climate since the new leaders may lack legitimacy or face opposition from diverse factions within the country. Uncertainty like this can hinder foreign investment, disrupt government services, and make long-term economic planning difficult. Coups frequently disrupt economic activity such as manufacturing, trading, and investment. Businesses may temporarily cease operations, investors may withdraw funds, and markets may become turbulent. Thirst disturbance has the potential to reduce economic growth and cause job losses, particularly in sectors that rely on political stability. Protests, clashes between competing factions and military operations all contribute to physical damage to a country's infrastructure during coups. This includes road, bridge, public building, and utility damage. Such devastation can have a severe impact on a country's long-term economic prospects. Coups are typically condemned by the world community, which can result in diplomatic and economic isolation. Sanctions and trade restrictions could be imposed on the country, severely damaging its economy and making it difficult to reconstruct destroyed infrastructure. Coups frequently result in the abrupt overthrow of established political leaders. This can diminish the central government's authority and stability, leaving a hole in the power system. With the traditional administration in chaos, numerous factions, such as warlords and armed organizations, may exploit the chance to exert control over specific districts or towns. The post-coup environment can be characterized by a fragmented power structure in which various factions struggle for authority. Warlords and armed groups frequently have their own militias and power sources. This fragmentation has the potential to result in the formation of de facto fiefdoms and parallel governing structures in various sections of the country. Warlords or armed organizations may exploit valuable resources such as oil, minerals, or fertile land in order to support their activities. This resource-based revenue might feed their ambitions and create an incentive to keep control, perhaps prolonging the battle. The struggle for control among multiple groups, along with a lack of resources, can lead to a full-fledged civil war. Different groups may compete for geographical control, influence, and resources, resulting in major violence and long-term instability. Civil wars caused by power vacuums generated by coups can have disastrous humanitarian effects. Civilians are frequently caught in the crossfire, resulting in displacement, fatalities, and significant socio-economic disruptions. Basic basics, such as food, water, and healthcare, may be jeopardized. International actors are frequently drawn into civil wars driven by power vacuums. This can include neighboring countries, international organizations, and foreign governments attempting to mediate the dispute or supporting opposing factions. Such external intervention has the potential to complicate and extend the civil conflict. Coups have the potential to destabilize governmental institutions such as the military and police. When these institutions disintegrate or are absorbed by conflicting factions, it becomes difficult to re-establish law and order, making conflict resolution more difficult. Even if a political settlement is eventually reached, the aftermath of a civil war can be extremely difficult. Rebuilding a broken country necessitates not just the repair of infrastructure, but also the resolution of grievances, the reconciliation of separated populations, and the restoration of trust in governing institutions. Civil wars, which are frequently triggered by coups and power vacuums, can have long-term consequences. They have the potential to stifle economic development, obstruct social progress, and perpetuate violent cycles that damage future generations. 
coups frequently lack democratic legitimacy since they usually involve the removal of a government that was elected or held power through established constitutional methods. Because of this lack of legitimacy, the new authority may resort to coercive tactics in order to preserve control. Individuals or groups supporting a coup frequently have a strong desire to consolidate power. In order to repress dissent, quiet resistance, and eliminate any risks to their power, they may turn to oppressive techniques. This accumulation of power has the potential to culminate in a tyrannical dictatorship. Security challenges, whether perceived or genuine, from internal or external sources, can motivate the new regime to pursue repressive policies. Opposition groups, ethnic or religious strife, or the fear of foreign intervention are examples of such threats. Repression may be viewed as a strategy of defending the regime and maintaining stability. Coups are frequently staged in the middle of political, economic, or social crises. The new authority may deploy repression to quell protests or address perceived instability as a form of crisis management. These actions, however, have the potential to escalate tensions and lead to additional human rights violations. Coup leaders may believe that they are less likely to be held accountable for human rights atrocities or violations of the rule of law. Because there may be no effective oversight or checks and balances in place, this lack of accountability might fuel repressive measures. Political opposition groups, civil society organizations, and independent media are frequently targeted by repressive administrations that emerge from coups. This repression has the potential to erode the checks and balances that are important for a healthy democracy and lead to further degradation of human rights. The international world usually rejects coups and may censure or isolate the new regime diplomatically. As a result, in order to preserve home control, the dictatorship may become more repressive, thereby exacerbating its international isolation. Repressive regimes can also have a negative impact on the economy. Excessive rules, corruption, and a lack of transparency, for example, can stifle economic progress, leading to increasing poverty and economic inequality under repressive governments. Repressive regimes can have a significant impact on a society's social and cultural fabric. Censorship, surveillance, and limits on free expression can impede creativity and innovation, limiting society's progress. Once repressive measures are put in place, it can be difficult to reverse them. Repressive regimes may leave a legacy of violence, trauma, and societal divisions, complicating the transition to more open and inclusive governance. In a nutshell, coups, while frequently linked with insecurity and political uncertainty, can occasionally provide a window of opportunity for excluded groups to promote their objectives and gain increased participation in government. This conclusion is not certain and is dependent on a complex interplay of circumstances such as the new leadership's objectives, international pressures, and the resilience of civil society movements. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see our content. We'll see you guys in the next one.